to you. Okay, so as I was saying earlier, what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at setting up proc dot. Proc dot is another tool that allows us to analyze the behavior of malware when it launches. Specifically, it actually creates a an almost a video that gives you play by play steps of the actions of the virus. And it what it takes is the information that we grab from our procmon process um, that we did last week. Remember last week or the week before we did procmon and we captured all the processes and all the steps? We can use that information to actually build the series of steps that in this case the BRB virus executes so that we can understand the behavior of our virus at a new level. As I was saying, however, procmon um, I haven't actually said this yet, but one of the issues we have with Procmon is it uses a couple of other tools. It uses a capture tool. It's either NCAP, NPCAP, um, uh, WinDump, or WinPCAP. WinPCAP has been deprecated. It's been replace, replaced by NPCAP, or WinDump works as well. Any of these tools will work as long as you have some packet capturing. Now, we're not going to look at that, so it doesn't really matter for our environment, for our setup but it does use that information. That's one tool. Another tool that it uses is a tool called GraphViz, a tool for visualization of graphical information. And that's where the problem is. The most recent version of GraphViz that has been compiled for Windows has a flaw in it. And I've been trying to fix this flaw and get it to work, and it's just not working. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the process of fix of installing this, understanding that it's not going to work and not worrying about it, because frankly, we have um, the tool available to us in Remnux right here. So when I run proc dot, this is what I get. Hopefully it won't cause my system to hang this time. Proc dot will actually give you a visual representation of what's going on in your environment. Once you do that, I don't know if you can actually make this out or not. Oh, it's too much data. Once you, um, this is what it gives you. And I know this isn't a very detailed representation, but this is what it gives you. And this is the cool bit right here. You can actually step through the actions of the virus. This is what it does. And these are the actions that it has captured based on our analysis. And then we can take a look and understand exactly what it's doing. For example, it creates a file called brbconfig.temp. We want to understand that. It tries and does some internet stuff. It's trying to communicate with the internet. And it references this file called appronningbrbbot.exe, which is pretty freaking cool, if you ask me. So, um, that's when you filter your results. If you don't filter your results, you can actually see everything that happens. For example, that was filtering the results based on BRB bot. When I give the whole file and use the tool to filter on brbbot.exe, it gives me a lot more information. This is everything going on. Which is right? It's like pen testing. There is no singular right answer. So this is our focus today. We're going to try and get to the point where we can actually capture using Procmon the exact steps that our virus goes through so that we can get a representation of the changes that it makes not only to the file system but to the system registry as well. Okay, To do that with Flare you kind of have to set it up and I'm just going to walk through the processes here. Now, as I said before, after we set Flare up, we turn off access to the internet because we're detonating viruses and we want to control it. In the future, 
we want to go into Flare and say, hey, I want you to um, do these things. I want you to talk to this network server so I can capture all that network traffic. Now it's going to want to talk to a different server. So you kind of have to fake it out. You kind of have to say, no, nope, trust me, this server over here is the server you're looking for. But that's, that's in a couple of weeks when we start doing some network analysis of executables. Okay, now, a um, couple of things. We've already detonated a virus in this environment. So what we should do is go back to an earlier version. So I know I told you to fire up Flare, but frankly, you need to power it off and revert to an earlier version of the Flare VM, okay? So you can do that, but frankly, it doesn't matter because I'm going to set up Flare and then I'm going to reset it anyway. Um, doesn't really matter. The nice thing is, is that right now in my documents folder in my BRB file, I've got the results of my scan from last class. So I can try taking a look and seeing if this stuff actually works. Let's take a look and see. So. Oh, wait a minute. No, not going to do that. So I'm going to actually shut down. And once my Windows Flare VM is off, I am going to tell it to revert. Sorry. So, don't worry about that, okay? So I'm saying this is the checkpoint I want. And what I did that was I applied it and I said, I'm going back to this checkpoint, which is my original one, and now I'm going to install my tool set, which means that all of my analyses of Burbot, all that dynamic analyses is gone, okay? So govern yourselves accordingly. It doesn't matter because you're going to have to do these over and over again anyway. But I'm actually going to show you a way around that. Actually, I'm going to show you now because it's kind of important. Because we keep resetting windows and rerunning analyses and resetting windows and rerunning analyses, there's actually value in uploading your The results of your analyses, there's actually value in uploading those to the Remnux server because we never revert Remnux. We only revert the systems that we run dynamic analyses on where we actually detonate the virus. It is possible to do dynamic analysis inside of Linux. That's out of scope for this course, but um, it is possible to do. So what we do is we run all of our software inside of... Um, Interesting. We run all of our software, all of our, oh, no, I don't want that. Um, ba -ba 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 Flare, let's just start that now and I can close that down and start it. We're going to run all of our malware that we are analyzing when we're doing our dynamic analysis, our behavioral analysis. We're going to be doing all of that inside of our Windows environment. So that's the environment that we need to be able to step back on. I would like to show you how to use this tool and to be honest you can take the results of your scan and export it to any environment you want. These tools don't really act like malware. They're not tricky like some of the other tools that we take a look at. You should be able to run this in any environment and then just import the necessary files regardless. I have reverted to a previous um, checkpoint in my virtual machine. You can also revert back to a previous um, clone 
in VirtualBox or a previous uh, breakpoint. I can't remember what the term is. I'm drawing a blank on the term. It's been a long weekend. Okay, regardless, here I am. I'm back. When I take a look inside this environment, I take a look at documents, I take a look at VRB bot. None of my analysis stuff is here. None of it. So all the things that I did last class, they're all gone. That's fine because I'm going to get into the habit of posting those across over to my Flare machine anyway. So this is good. The first thing we need to do is to download a bunch of um, installer files. However, as I said, our Windows Flare VM should not be talking to the internet. Our Windows Flare VM should only be talking on our host only network or the approximation of a host only network that I created inside of Azure, inside of Hypervisor, Hyper-V. So that's not going to work. So as I say in the lecture notes, what I really want you to do is I want you to download these tools inside of Remnux. So first thing we want to download is, well, let's take a look at uh, Win PCAP. If we look for Win PCAP, go to the Win PCAP home, it basically says um, it's basically deprecated and then it recommends NPCAP. So we can download NPCAP if we want, okay? Uh, no, that's, a, that's an ad, so I'm not gonna use that. When PCAP for 10, we can download that, but it's a little much for what I want. Um, NPCAP 1.0 installer for Windows 7, 8, 10, both x86 and x64. So there's my NPCAP installer. Download and installing NPCAP free edition, NPCAP 1.00 installer. I'm going to save that file and it's going to end up in my downloads directory and I'm fine with that, okay? So that's the first one. As the notes say, you need to have some kind of a capture software tool in the configuration just so that the um, tool will work. You can also try downloading WinDump. It's a standalone executable. You can click on that and it'll just download a DOS Windows executable. WinDump, click on OK. This is fine because we're not actually going to do anything with the network packet analysis process inside of ProcDot. Okay, so I've downloaded two things. I have downloaded WinDump and NPCAP just so I can pick and choose whichever one I want to use. Your miles mileage may vary. The next one I need to download is GraphViz, P-H-V-I-Z. GraphViz is a graphical tool or a graphical visualization tool that you can use libraries, or sorry, as libraries in other programs. And that's what Proc.Dot does. So we are going to download GraphViz, G-R-A-P-H-V-I-Z. Click on download, and it'll give you the download installers for Windows. De development Windows install packages. That should probably work. 10. I think CMake is the one you want. Release x64. There it is there. Graph is install 244.2 Win64. Save file. Okay. Does it matter? No, because again, it doesn't really matter. Okay. We're going to throw all of this away and do something different anyway. Okay. So I've downloaded my capture software. I've downloaded my visualization software. The next thing I want to ensure is that I have proc.dot available. You can grab proc.dot.com from proc.dot.com and you can go to the downloads page. Interesting. So go to download and you want to download the, the install binaries for proc.dot. Okay. There is a Windows installer. 
it is zip passwords and the password is proc dot okay so I'm going to download the 32-bit 64-bit installer as well again all of this is done in Remnux do not close down Remnux because we're going to be coming back to it but now when I take a look at my downloads directory I've got the two network package trapping tools I've got my proc.zip file and I've got my grapviz installer perfect now I can make these available to my flare VM with our age-old trick that we've used time and time again with the Python module simple oops and I'm going to use port 80 just to make my life a little easier and of course it wants me to do it as root so sudo bang bang so that I can do my Python share. Now the sudo bang bang what bang bang does is it executes the last command which was Python dash M. It didn't want me doing that as a regular user it wanted me doing it as root so I did sudo bang bang will execute the last command so now I have a simple web server running on port 80 as always we can do a sanity check I'm going to again open up a new tab and go to localhost and I can see the files that I want to share with flare available on that perfect next thing I want to do verify my IP address it's 101 perfect I can go over to flare fire up my preferred browser navigate to that site and there are the installers I want so again how did I do that because and I'm doing this because we've locked down network functionality in Windows and if you haven't then you've already screwed up and you may need to reinstall Windows okay so or revert back if you've done your reverting properly then you can revert back okay um, but you need to ensure Windows doesn't talk to the internet so that um, if I want to install stuff I can't hit the internet for these things I have to hit the only machine that it can see and then that is the Remnux server so I go to my browser I search for the necessary files that I want the installers and or zip files and there's one more file we're going to need we're going to need a config file as well but we'll get that in a little while I download them to a directory I make that directory visible as the document root of a temporary web server using that Python simple HTTP server module we've used time and time again in our classes so that now I can see it from my flare Windows machine so now it's just a case of saving these executables somewhere I'm going to say save them in the downloads directory save 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 link as and I'm saving them in my downloads and then save link as and I'm saving them in my downloads directory perfect I have all the pieces that I need now I can start my installation first things first go to downloads install npcap your installer is going to complain saying hey I can't see the internet you know I should check my notes your installer is going to complain that it can't install these things because it doesn't have access to the internet of course it can't because it's blocked now this is another issue I have with Microsoft it's not like we disabled updates and somehow Microsoft pushed this update to this machine I've turned off all the malware uh, tools and yet they're still trying to run these protecting things and I guess from a, an end-user point of view I kind of understand it 
but it's at the point where it's heavy handed. It's not letting us do our job. And I really dislike Microsoft for doing that. So anyway, I'm going to tell it, even though I can't find the smart screen scanning tool, I'm just going to install NPCAP. I agree. Um, the defaults should be fine. Okay, um, it wants to uninstall an old version of WinPCAP, that's fine. And, um, and install NPCAP, I remember that now, yeah. So it wants to install the WinPCAP that was already in place, but the old WinPCAP didn't have a, a capture, easy capture tool, doesn't matter. Okay, once it's done, click on next and finish, perfect. The next thing we want to install is the Brofkin GraphViz. Again, Today is not only about using ProcDot, but installing. Same issue as before, it can't verify that it's good, we don't care. Next, I agree. Uh, do not add graph to the system path. Actually, you know what, I wouldn't, because for whatever reason, I'll show you why. I'm just gonna do it for me or for all users, it doesn't matter. When you do this, graph, uh, the, the installer complains that the path is too long which is really telling, it does not like that. So you're probably better by saying, do not add it to the path, because this is what happens whenever you install it. Of course, this time it worked. Last two times it failed horribly. Okay, so I've got GraphViz install, I've got um, everything else installed now i'm going to deploy proc dot okay it is not um an installer proc dot is actually a standalone executable that we can just drag into our cert and to wherever we want it please keep in mind what they said on this page that the password for proc dot is proc dot fair enough so what we need to do is we need to take this either 32-bit version or 64-bit version. I'm going to recommend the 64-bit version and copy it somewhere. Brenda, do you have a question? Okay. No, nope, not a problem. So I want to take the 64-bit version. So I'm just going to drag the 64-bit folder wherever I want it. For me, Safe pace is probably C drive program files because it's 64 bit, and I'm just going to drag it in here. When I do that, and please note that when I set these machines up for you, I installed um, 7 zip, so it's probably going to try and open it up with 7 zip, which shouldn't be a problem. Okay. So I'm going to drag this just into that folder, into program files. Don't drag it into a subfolder. If you want, you can drag it off to the side here. If you drag it into a folder, that's where it's going to be. But if you just drag it off to the side, it shouldn't. So two things are going to happen. It's going to say, give me the password. And we just saw the password for proc dot is proc dot. And once it starts copying over, it's going to say, are you sure you want to write to this folder? And we're going to say, yes, I want to write to the program files folder or directory if you want to use the vernacular of Linux. Okay. And you should now see inside of program files Win64 because that was the name of the folder over here. I recommend you change the name of that from Win64 to proc dot, just like that. Again, it's going to complain, but that's fine. Okay. Now we've got proc dot deployed. We don't actually install it. We simply deploy it. We can close down 7-zip. One last thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put something in this folder as well. This is why I downloaded WinDump. 
I'm actually going to move WinDump from the downloads folder into my proc doc folder. The reason being is because I have to configure proc doc before I use it. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Any questions? Keeping in mind that I am recording this and that there's a record being done. Okay. So I've got everything in place. In theory, I can just launch proc dot now. And it should work. Do you want to check on each start? No, because you can't. There's no point in trying. Would you like to participate in beta tests? No, because I can't send you the results. Proc doc depends on third party components, and this is why we're doing this. Proc doc needs to be configured before you can use it. So it says, here, where can I find these things? And I don't know if you can make this out. I really can't zoom in, I'm afraid. But um, what it wants is it wants to find win dump, TCP dump, um, win uh, n cap or win p cap or n p cap or something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to click on the little ellipsis button at the end, and I'm going to tell it where to find win dump. Perfect. It has it. And it wants to graph viz, and it's looking specifically for the tool dot in graph viz. Not a problem. Click on that, go to program files, scroll up to graph viz, scroll up to bin, and select dot and open. Again, how did I do that? It wants to configure these two executables before you can use this tool and this is why I'm going through with it. It wants some kind of packet capturing tool so we're going to just click on the little ellipse button and we're going to go back or it should open up automatically in our proc dot folder if not go to program files proc dot and select win dump and open. It wants the dot executable in GraphViz. Click on the ellipse. Again, go to Program Files. Scroll up until you see GraphViz. Go into the bin directory. And there should be dot dot exe. Select and open. OK? Um, and that should be it. You can then click on OK. And then you can try using this tool. If you still have in your BRB bot folder, if you still have those analyses that you ran, you can take a look at those right now. They're not going to work well because they want to, uh, we have to do one more tweak, one more little bit of a fix before we go forward. I am now on slide nine of the handout. Before we do anything else, we have to tell Procmon to capture correct columns. And rather than go through that setting, because it's a bit of a nightmare to set up properly, what I did in Learn is I added a link. Is it this one? No, it's not this one. This one. Here we go. Here we go. So what I did under the proc dot and procmon redux uh, folder is I created a link bitproject05.acumenic.rc.ca.pc.pmc and it gives you access to this procmon configuration file that we want to import into our procmon utility before we do a capture. Okay? So, what does that mean? If you haven't restarted or flash back to a previous version, you need to flash back before you do this. Okay, I'm going to keep going and I'm going to give you a good hour to work on this with the recordings. But at the end of the day, what you need to do is go back into Remnux. Actually, I'm not even going to open up a browser. I'm going to, I'm in my downloads directory. I still have my web server running, so I can wget http colon forward slash 
bit project. I didn't need the HTTP. 05.academic c.ca forward slash pc.pmc. If I haven't misspelt it, it should down a, download a file called pc.pmc. And if you take a look at that file, uh, I don't have, okay. not hash it's uh, it doesn't matter if you take a look at this it's not a text file not exactly it's a binary file so it's a custom thing so it's not like you can just grab it or modify a text file you actually need this config file or you need to configure the environment properly so Long story short, I've got the pc.pmc file right here. I want to grab that in Windows. So I am going to, again, go to my browser, reload, and now I've got this config file right here. Save link as, and you know what? I'm not gonna put this in downloads. Actually, you know what, that's fine. I'm just going to put it in downloads. It doesn't really matter because you load it and forget it. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to relaunch our attack. And the PowerPoint presentation has that information for you. We don't have to do the reg shot stuff. All right. The reg shot results should be fine. And that's what we're going to focus on today. I'm going to recapture my reg stuff because I lost them when I was playing around with this, but that's not what you need to worry about. The results, the um, they were um, CSV results from RedShot. We're going to post those to Remnux as well. All of our results, we're gonna to push to Remnux so we don't lose them. If you have lost them, there's value in you going through this activity yet again, okay? But just like before, we need to set up our environment. We need to make sure that um, it has the, um, that uh, proc dot is installed um, and configured. We need to import into proc dot, not proc mod, sorry. We need to in, import, um, sorry, it was proc mod. We need to import that config file into proc mod and before we start capturing data in proc mod, okay? So that's what we're going to do next. Unfortunately, I don't have the shortcut on my desktop. And uh, I don't need that, so let's use this one. Also, if you recall in our static analysis, it's expecting it to be at a specific place. C drive, users, uh, your user account, which is Flare user, app data, roaming. That's where it expects it to be. Isn't that where it expects it to be? I don't want to get wrong here. Sorry, I'm just going to verify to make sure I'm not misrepresenting you. Yeah, user, app data, roaming. Yeah, that's the right directory. Yep. Yeah. So that's where it expects the virus to be. So I'm just going to copy it over to that folder. Okay. Leaving my original instance of the malware in my directory. If you've got it here, perfect. You don't have to worry about that. Now that you have it, you can right click and drag it to the desktop to create a shortcut as we did last time. And you should have done three or four times by now. Right click, modify the properties, ensure under advanced that it runs as administrator, which is an exercise in futility. 
but we do it anyway, okay? So I have my executable in the correct location. I have a shortcut on my desktop. That's the first thing I need to do. The second thing I need to do, and close that. I'm gonna leave that open. I'm just gonna minimize it. The second thing I need to do is to launch proc mod. Yes, and I'm going to tell Procmon that it needs to load a different config. So I'm going to stop it from capturing. Uh, that's fine like that. And I'm going to tell it to, hey, you know what? I want you to uh, options. No, there it is. File import configuration. That's what I'm going to tell it to do. Downloads, there's that pc.pmc file. That's what it's looking for. Click on open, and now it's loaded the configuration. You should only have to do that once, but there's nothing wrong with doing that before each one of our captures, okay? So now it has the right configuration. I'm going to clear out the events, so I'm only capturing the events that again happen right around the analysis or the execution, I should say, of the malware. I'm also going to fire up Process Hacker. Um, it wants to launch Process Hacker too. That should be fine. Okay. I like setting up Process Hacker. I like setting up process hacker so I don't see a lot of unnecessary stuff. I don't need to see WinLogin. I don't need to see Firefox. All I really need to see is the Explorer stuff. Other stuff might get started, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, it's probably going to appear under the Explorer if it appears anywhere. Okay, so I've got process hacker. You can have everything expanded as long as you can see exactly where your malware is going to appear. I've got this set up. If I was going to do the red shot, I would fire up red shot. I would do my initial capture as well. Why don't I do that just as a refresher? I'm going to go red shot. I'm going to fire that up as well. I'm also going to tell it as always to scan the entirety of my C drive, okay? Or I can just change the text here to just say C colon backslash. I'm also going to tell it where to store my results. Um, Flare user, I'm going to store it in documents, VRB bot, that should be fine. First shot, shoot. As we saw last time, this does take a while to complete. We're going to let it do its thing. Are there any questions? I remember why I didn't want to do red shot. While that's running. Yeah, I touched it and now it thinks it's failed. 
it really hasn't. We can see that it's going through and doing different things here, so it's probably okay. I'm going to right click, I'm going to choose a column. I don't know if this is going to mess up my analysis, but really I don't care. Add integrity, move it up to after CPU, so I have an integrity column. We don't need this. We've already seen that it'll run itself as a um, high integrity. We don't really need to worry about that too much. I apologize again for the boredom of this presentation, but sometimes when you're doing these kinds of things, you just have to wait. I'm sure you saw the same thing when we were trying to do pen testing. It would be nice if these things didn't take forever, but they take forever. Sorry, Amanshu, I missed your question. Oh, no, you just asked it. Okay. Good time for a question. I mean, it just finished its first shot, so that's okay. Um, perfect. We're going to come back to that in a sec, but I don't want to waste any time, Amanshu. So I'm going to answer your question while we do this. So I've done my first shot. I need to start tracking processes again. So I have that information. I need to launch my executable say yes launch the executable and I need to give myself about 30 seconds so I'm going to go to 1151 so yes that's what we're doing Amanshu is we're continuing the dynamic analysis we're adding another layer to our dynamic analysis are we going to get anything extra from it no but as I've said time and time again these tools are designed to fool us so it's always good to analyze looking for the same information from different tools and that's what we're doing today plus I really like this tool so my virus has been running for 30 seconds VRB bots right there I am going to terminate it I could have just hit the delete key yes terminate it perfect I am going to stop capturing processes and I am going to perform my second shot right away and again, after about five seconds, it'll probably lock up again. Five um, and a half seconds, to be more exact. But we're doing our second shot. Now, if you've deleted your results, you're going to need to do your second shot. If you haven't deleted your results, the next step is going to be good for you. Okay? I'm actually going to let Red Shot finish before I take a look at the results of Process Monitor because now Process Monitor is the target. Process Monitor is the goal for the next step.
reminds me of my days in the military where you would do something and then wait five minutes and then do something and then wait five minutes. We used to call it hurry up and wait. I really dislike watching little hourglass or little time indicators or progress meters. I really dislike that, but this is the industry we are all in. God, that's tedious. Perfect. So it's done the second shot. Perfect. Now I can compare the results. It's going to go through, run a comparison, and it's going to present me the results in a text file. We could also have asked for an HTML file, but the text file is going to work for us just as well. And it should be launching Notepad right away. Perfect. Take, I click on the compare button again. Click on the output so that it opens it up in Notepad. Then we can go through and see the changes that it made. Perfect. File, save as, and I'm going to save this in Burbot and I'm gonna call this um, Red shot results dot txt. Perfect. Those are the results of my red shot before and after. Perfect. I'm done with red shot. I can close that down and I'm back to proc mod or process monitor. Okay. Two things. First off, I want to save these results. So I'm going to go file save. And I can save them as a PML, but I'm going to save them as a CSV. I'm going to save everything, and again, I'm going to save these in my BRB directory. And this is BRBBot Procmon. Unfiltered. I'm going to call it unfiltered, and I'm going to save it. Even though I told it CSV, click on OK, make sure that it actually saves it correctly. There's my CSV. Perfect. I can also save it as a procmon file. All right. There's nothing wrong with saving it as a native procmon file. All right. Save that. And there's my PML file. That's the procmon native file. Perfect. I want to show you one more thing though. There is a filter option. You can filter the results and to be honest, they're already filtered. There has already been a number of filters that have been added to Procmon. They're already in place, so it's already ignoring a bunch of stuff. Maybe you need to go in there sometime in the future and unfilter those results. But I need to add a new filter. I want to add a new filter where the uh, process name contains, and then the drop down list should be able to find my malware. Right there. The process name contains BRB bot. Yeah, that's a good filter. Process name contains BRB bot. Include it. All right. Click on add that. So process contains BRB bot, include that. If another one was added because you already clicked on it initially with the architecture, remove it. You should only have process contains BRB bot, apply the filter. And then you can close this. And you should see you have a lot fewer results, specifically related to the PR to the BRB bot exe process. So we're streamlining our results. We're going to go file. We're going to save this. We just want a CSV file. And we're going to call this filtered. This is not unfiltered. This is filtered.csv. 
we are going or you could it'll actually add it for us but i'm calling it proc prb bot proc mon filtered click on ok now that we have that we could close that but we're not going to close it just yet so we've got our files and that's what we bring in to proc mon we can now open up one of those csv files either filtered or unfiltered we can open them up we can specify what launcher we want to use it's going to be brb bot and then we can refresh son of a bitch i do not freaking believe it worked oh well already then and we recorded that twice awesome son of a bitch i cannot believe that worked all weekend long i've been fighting with it and it worked unbelievable anyway as i said before there's a little icon here that allows you to toggle between just static mode which let's be honest here you can zoom in a little bit on these things view can't you zoom yeah zoom in you can zoom in a little bit but you might lose some of the stuff so just be a little bit careful with the zoom in feature okay but doesn't that make a really nice picture you might want to add to your dynamic analysis report for brb bot i think that makes a beautiful picture all right however there's also video mode with video mode you can actually see what happens as the virus executes okay also that's the filtered results set again i'm going to turn the video off so i can see all of these so i have a nice little graphic i can add to my report i can also open the unfiltered results still tell it to focus on brb bot you still need to go through and look for the launcher even though it's going to probably be the exact same select it from all of these services that are available to you you can look at all of these things and see how they operate but we're going to focus on brb bot by double clicking on it it's still in there and now i need to click on refresh i can't believe that's working now this does not make a very good graphic but it does give you some indications of what's going on and again when we are in movie mode you can actually see all the activities that brb bot does to our environment all right a lot of these things are registry calls a lot of these things are um, attempts at communicating with the internet and most importantly it tries to do something with brb config Dot temp. So these are the things we need to remember. It's trying to communicate with the internet. It does a bunch of changes to the registry. We're not going to worry so much about that, but it makes a temp file and it tries to communicate with the internet. And that's the next bit of analysis that we are going to do. Okay. Now, and I don't want to be um, mean, but hopefully some of you are having problems with this hopefully some of you are not able to run this and it's throwing an error saying that it can't modify a temp file we're going to assume that i'm still having that problem okay i'm going to file i'm going to save this as and i'm going to go back to my documents i'm going to go to brb dot uh, brb bot and i'm going to save this as brb bot underscore proc dot results so I've saved this scans results perfect I can close it down however let's say for argument's sake that that didn't work that none of these things are working the way I want them to that is possible because of the nature of Windows and it keeps screwing stuff up I'm going to shut down process monitor but I'm not going to shut down anything else I have 
a folder of really good results right here. And I am going to need to reset this machine and I don't want to lose these results. So I want to store these somewhere that's not going to change. Look at this. I've got Remnux here. Let's take a look. I've already got a directory called brbbot.exe and I've already got some results in it. So why don't I just push all the stuff from here into this folder so I don't lose it. Now we can't use the website. All right. This web server process running here, I can't use that because that's for downloading and we don't have dynamic pushing or anything like that. So what we need, and frankly, we can stop this now. We don't need that web server running anymore so we can stop it. Not that we have to, but it's always good to stop that when it's not running. So I'm in BRB bot and I want to push this content here. The beauty is just like in, um, oops, just like in um, Kali, the SSH service is installed but not running. So if I take a look at service SSH status, it's there, but it's not running. Cue to quit. Service SSH start. Now I've got, um, oh, it wants to uh, do this as root, so the Remnux user is Remnux and the password is malware. Okay, perfect. And this is all in my Remnux user directory whose password is malware. We've already done this once, I'm pretty sure. Go to Windows. Actually, I think I have it on this desktop. I think I created a shortcut on the desktop for you. Yes, I did. You should have WinSCP in Flare. You should have a connection to your Remnux, username Remnux, password is malware. Click on Login. You should see, if you don't, you should see the BRB bot directory. And if you do, then you can go into that directory and you can upload all of these results that are new. We don't need to re-upload the brbbot.exe. And I don't know if I want to upload that, but I'm going to upload everything anyway. I'm going to move all of these work files into Remnux so I don't lose them. Okay? That's done. I can shut down WinSCP. I can shut down Firefox. I can shut down Explorer. And to be honest, I can actually shut down Windows now because I'm done. Power off and shut down Windows. Because the next thing I wanted to show you is that if this didn't work, service SSH stop. malware service SSH status oh it's still trying to stop hmm. it's still trying to kill it but that's fine it'll shut it down when it shuts it down now I've got all of those files there I can run um, proc dot here and just like before I want to make it a little bit bigger. Oh, that was a mistake. I remember that mistake now. Don't do what I just did. Okay. Go to Documents. Sorry. Go to Home. Go to BRB Bot. And there's, a, there's the filtered and the unfiltered results. Let's take a look at the filtered results. Um, again, we need to specify a launcher. We're going to use the BRB bot and we are going to refresh our graphic. And just like before, we get this beautiful static. It doesn't look as nice as the Windows one, so maybe there's value in making sure both work. But as always, we have the movie that, un that plays exactly what happened with our malware. Okay, so long story short, if Windows doesn't work, um, you can always push your results to um,
run Nux and run the analysis there. Running proc dot here. And frankly, I wanted to try this and I didn't and I should have. I wonder what happens if I open up my old work file. So I'm going to go to home, brb bot, open up the pd file, refresh. Yeah, I can't open the procmon file. So that, that proc dot file that I created in Windows doesn't work in Remnux. Of course it doesn't, it's a different file system. So I just wanted to try that to see if it works. It doesn't. Okay, any questions? Alrighty, so I'm going to stop this process now. I'm going to stop recording the video. I just want to see if it'll go full screen on me again. I hope it doesn't. Awesome. Perfect. Good. All right. So I'm going to stop the recording. But as always, when you do this, you want to shut down everything properly. We shut down Windows. We can close that down. We have Remnux running. We can power Remnux off. Make sure that that's shut down as well. And closed. Sanity check. All of my VMs are off. Um, if you're going to use this tool in um, Hyper-V, then you may want to create another checkpoint. Okay. Now that everything's working, you may want to create another checkpoint before you detonate. I'm not going to tell you how to do that. You need to figure these things out. So after you get your tools installed, shut down Windows, create a new checkpoint, and then detonate the virus again. Everything's off. Shut down the malware VM. And as always, once that's down, go back to your virtual machines in Azure and power off your virtual machine. Okay, those are the steps. I'm going to stop recording.